Vision 2030 means so many different things to so many different people and so many different government entities and sectors by virtue of how they can contribute to the vision. When you think of Vision 2030 as a member of the Ministry of Investment, uh, what kind of relationship do you have with it and what does it mean to you? That's also a great question. And I think, you know, I wish we could ask this to almost every Saudi and, and then develop <laughs> yeah. some sort of... Yeah. Because it's because because I think you would be... You gave me an idea. <laughs> you gave me an idea. Yeah? Yeah. I think just even if you get one adjective from each person, it would just be really interesting to 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 observe what kind of palette that that creates. I uh, Vision 2030 is a North Star, um, <laughs> is a blueprint, right? Uh, it's ultimately at the end of the day, it's 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 an ambition, it's a strategy, and it drives so much of of what we do because we like. We like we as human beings we like structure right we like to follow structure we like things to be neat and tidy um, although obviously if you look at the creative types who like you know ad hoc and innovation but but in in general in general I think we like to be governed by a structure that makes a lot of sense and a structure from which we can derive a deep sense of purpose and meaning because when you feel like even you as an, if you look at it as an individual. When you work towards something, you were asking me earlier, was this a job that you wanted to land? What is your five-year plan, 10-year plan, 20-year plan? We, we invest a lot in, in designing and developing those milestones in our lives because they keep us going. When you have a bad day and you think, that's okay, it's going to get me to this point in five years or point X in 10 years, all of a sudden it's worth it. What we're doing to, to, to achieve Vision 2030 objectives is so difficult. It's it's extremely difficult. It's extremely strenuous. It's intellectually challenging. It's economically challenging. Um, obviously, it has its it's 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 fun. It's rewarding, but you need to be reminded that if you persevere and you power through and you overcome the day to day, yeah, it's hard to to achieve these economic objectives. It's hard to achieve these social objectives on multiple layers. But you have a north star. You have an end goal. You have a target. I think I think it's extremely motivating and very powerful. Testament to how hard it is. Uh, it was launched with a due date in 14 years. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, 2016. Yes, correct. 14 year plan. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I mean, but you kind of you kind of need to establish a 14 year plan. Um, you know, again, I mentioned this. We, we were we were slow and almost stagnant, and we've heard this from a lot of our government uh, uh, officials who have spoken about the kingdom's transformation for a very long time in ma many different sectors, where we were not doing ourselves a service or any justice to our not only our natural resources but our talent, uh, the kingdom's value proposition in so many different sectors that today. It's kind of our our day job as a ministry of investment to communicate to investors. When you communicate the kingdom's value proposition and you realize how Vision 2030 really uh, brought brought those value propositions to the surface, um, and I'll give you my the sector that that I handled the ministry as an example. So when we when COVID when COVID struck, okay, and we realized that our pharmaceutical industry is quite archaic in general right it's it's a it's an industry that's driven by relatively low value activity of packaging medications we have a few you know robust generics industry players saudi companies that develop you know generics medicines uh but you know we we didn't have an industry that would have prepared us for a pandemic like covid or for um any any sort of infectious disease crisis uh, or health crisis in that sense. So for us, it was a moment where we had to confront our vulnerabilities in the sector and, uh, you know, understand how we could, you know, go back to the drawing board and develop a biotechnology ecosystem that would enable pandemic preparedness 
uh, that would harbor homegrown innovation, that would bring in exciting cutting edge technology in the space, that would give Saudis access to innovative medicines, therapeutics and diagnostics. Um, but at the very beginning of that realization process, which is sort of mid late 2020, people are scrambling trying to get you know PPE and masks and 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 make sure that people are following public health guidelines. While we were uh, back back to the drawing board, understanding how how can we begin to build a competitive medical biotechnology ecosystem? What do we have going for us? What can we double down on? And so we realized many things, uh, which is you know we have a very unique demographic, unique patient population. We have dig- disease registries. Uh, we have a unique genomic architecture. We have a lot of great competitive, robust research taking place in our uh, star research institutions uh, in across the kingdom's different geographies. We need to pull a lot of that academic research out into the commercial world. We have a geostrategic location that at the time, everyone was talking about how can you broaden access to vaccines and healthcare and medical supplies. We have the largest uh, relief and humanitarian aid fund uh, and, and institution in, in the world, Markaz Malik Salman Gatha. Uh, where healthcare is a key key component and pillar of of what that um, of what that center does, and y- you know, from from a logistics perspective, we can we can give a lot of these different uh, disadvantaged parts of the world access to healthcare. We uh, uh, bring in and welcome uh, pilgrims and uh, for for Hajj and Umrah every year. So we do have a public health. Uh, um, we do have a responsibility when it comes to public health and ensuring that we play a role in early alarm systems, early notification, early pandemic uh, preparedness. Um, so we went back and we drew an industry and we, 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 we mapped out the value chain from innovation, research, development, manufacturing. Where can the kingdom play? Where do we have a right to compete? Where can we build arguments that are compelling to investors to come in and co-build and co-develop with us? But people were asking us to to answer your question, why biotech? Like, why should the kingdom invest in biotech? Khalas, we're late. We uh, probably, it's going to take us like another, you know, it took countries like South Korea and Singapore who decided decades ago that they were going to be biotech clusters. Now they're competing globally. You know, how long is it going to take us? 20, 30 years? And we're probably late, so let's focus on other sectors where we have more low-hanging fruit and more of an advantage. Yeah, I totally disagree with that. 100%, yeah. right? But building a case, that challenge that we heard uh, across a number of government fora and debates encouraged us to build an even stronger case for why biotech in the kingdom, right? If countries like Korea and Singapore, the examples that we use now as benchmarks for industry development, if they asked themselves when they decided to build this, why biotech? They wouldn't be doing what they're doing today. And so it's not why biotech. The right question is, where do we start? What, where's the smartest place to start? Because you bring in a few exciting opportunities, you bring a few committed, dedicated investors who demonstrate value, who demonstrate true technology transfer, building capabilities, transferring know-how. Once you're able to prove two, three, four, five success stories, it's then a domino effect. And we have a biomedical value proposition to communicate to the rest of the world, which is why we have noticed insanely increased momentum in the space over the past two years. The conversations that we have with biotech founders, life science funds, large pharmaceutical companies today is starkly and vastly different from the conversations we used to have two years ago because all of a sudden, Kingdom's a serious market and they want to do something about this sector.